Well, good afternoon and uh, welcome to Songs of Praise. And welcome to, if you're joining us online, it's great to see everyone. The sun's flushed everybody out and we're all here in force, which is great, isn't it? What a wonderful week it's been. Who's been enjoying the sunshine? Anybody? Oh, we're British, aren't we? We moan about everything. <laughs> Well, I love the sunshine. I, I'm also enjoying seeing some of the flowers blooming again and being able to sit outside as well. Anyone been sitting out in their garden? A few of you. Yes, it's lovely, isn't it? I have to say, though, I wasn't quite so happy to see some uh, loads of weeds coming up through my astroturf. So I did go and pull them out and they keep coming back again. So that's not a good sign. But I did buy a little, little fly mow lawnmower yesterday for a little bit of grass out the front that is real yesterday. So that's what I was doing on my day off yesterday. Well, today is a day of celebration. It's Pentecost Sunday um, when we remember the coming of the Holy Spirit uh, to the early church. And it is a big day to celebrate. So after Jesus died and rose again, uh, three days later, he then spent 40 days with his disciples, preparing them for the time when he would leave them and go back into heaven to be with his father. Uh, but before he went, he told them to wait for the special gift that his father would send them from heaven. And that was the precious gift of his Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit would be the real power in their ministry you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth, Jesus said. But the Holy Spirit is also the spirit and presence of Jesus who comes to live with all of his followers. And when Jesus said, I will be with you always, of course, he's not here physically with us. He's back in heaven with his father. But what he meant was he would be with us by his spirit. And though the Holy Spirit is powerful, he's also gentle. And he's loving as well. And he comes alongside us and gives that, that comfort and reassurance that we need. And maybe sometimes you felt God's presence with you. Maybe you've felt that God was speaking to you. Well, that was the Holy Spirit at work, um, speaking to you and bringing God's presence real to you. And the Holy Spirit shows us our need of Jesus. He helps us to take those steps of faith to put our trust in God. And then he gives us the power and resources to love God and to serve him in deeper ways. Amazing gift that God has given all of us who love and trust the Lord Jesus. And the Bible says that all over the world, God's spirit is moving, bringing people uh, to know him and also carrying out, uh, enabling people to carry out God's work on the earth. So on this special day, let's pray. Let's thank God for this wonderful gift of his Holy Spirit. And let's pray that he will speak and move among us today as well. Let's pray together. Our Father God, we thank you for your love and the presence of your Holy Spirit. And we thank you for the wonderful plans you have for those who love and follow you. And Lord, we pray that we wouldn't miss out on anything that you have for us. May we hear you speaking to us today and we pray that you would help us respond to you. Amen. So let's sing our First hymn, a song to our risen Lord Jesus, our King Jesus, who came from heaven to earth to save us and who's now back with his father in heaven, triumphant and reigning over all. And it's a great way to picture him as we come to worship this afternoon, to picture him reigning over all. So we'll sing with thankfulness that we can have our sins forgiven and we can know eternal hope and life with God forever. We're going to sing that great hymn, Christ triumphant, ever reigning, saviour, master king. So let's sing to him and do stand if you're able. Don't worry if you, you can't, but uh, let's stand if we're able. Thank you.
That's a great hymn, isn't it? Christ triumphant, ever reigning, Saviour, Master King, Lord of heaven, our lives sustaining. I wonder how often we stop and consider the ways that God sustains our lives, the ways that he helps us and provides for us, that he encourages us and strengthens us. Psalm 103 tells us not to forget all the Lord's benefits. God is working on our behalf all the time and we uh, need to be thankful for that. Jeff Collett is going to come and share some of the ways that God has sustained him and walked alongside him. And after Jeff's spoken to us, we're going to sing a great Pentecost hymn uh, by Charles Wesley, O Thou Who Camest From Above. Well, hello, everybody. Some of you know that my name is Jeff, um, and I've been a part of the fellowship here since ooh, 1974, on and off, so that's a very long time. And I know we're going to be talking a little bit later on in the service about uh, the last chapter of Ecclesiastes, and it's a little bit about old age and things like that. And the great thing about being old is that you can look back over many, many years uh, and think about the things that God has done in your life. Uh, remembering how God teaches us and guides us. And I've been a Christian for 55 years, and I want to share with you in the next few minutes something uh, of those experiences in the way that God has spoken to me uh, during that time. Now, you might be thinking that you're going to hear some wonderful sort of blinding Damascus Road experience, but I have to say that's not how God uh, has talked to me over the years. I've only got five minutes, so I'd better get on, haven't I, and really give you a few instances uh, of how God has spoken over the past years. There's one or two of you who will know a little bit of my history, uh, and so if you do, you won't be surprised to know that I'm going to talk for my first tale about the Antarctic, which is where I used to work many years ago. From my early 20s, I was hearing God in the frozen wastes of Antarctica. So picture Antarctica. It's a bit chilly in here now compared to outside, so maybe you're getting the feel for it. But on very rare days, the howling wind stops and the sun emerges from the blowing snow and a silence descends. The silence that can only be found in a place where everything is frozen solid. There's no twittering birds. There's no rustling leaves because there's no trees or anything like that. There's no distant cars because there's nobody about. So it also means there's no distant human voices and really genuinely, the only sound you can hear is the sound of your own heartbeat in your ears, which is a very unusual experience. Now, you rem may remember that in the Bible, we've been talking in our services about Elijah. And you remember Elijah in the Bible, after the raging storm and the earthquake and everything else, in the still silence after those things, he heard the voice of God, the still small voice of God. Well, bad news again, I didn't hear a voice. But what God gave me was a really amazing feeling of the overwhelming beauty of his creation and the privilege of knowing the God who created it. I spent my days negotiating glaciers with crevasses, crossing frozen seas, climbing snowy peaks, all in the bitter cold of the Antarctic winters. And several of my colleagues, that used to intimidate them a little bit, and they were frightened about going out sometimes. But I was out every day, and I always felt safe in the knowledge that despite all these hazards, I knew the God, the boss, who was in charge of all this. And that was a real comfort to me. And the Bible tells us that the heavens declare the glory of the Lord. And through the things he has made, we can understand him and his desire to have a relationship with us. So God spoke to me through his creation. So we're going to skip on another five years or six years, actually, to the beginning of my 30s. And I gained a wife by that stage. And my wife and I, Carol, who's also here, uh, we found ourselves in Cambodia, very different to the Antarctic. Uh, but there we were working for a mission as the Khmer Rouge guerrillas and the government forces continued to scrap. So it's a little bit of a dangerous place. And the Cambodians really feared the return of the Khmer Rouge and the genocide that had happened in that country, an outright war that destroyed a quarter of the population in the past decade, in the previous decade. And our own daily experience was also one full of sort of incongruity and strangeness 
with constant power cuts and water cuts. Cross-cultural communi cross communication was very difficult. People who didn't speak the same language as us and had different habits and customs. The weather was a bit grim, 100% humidity very often, temperatures up to the 40s. And people with guns who were used to using them. So gunfire was never commented on. It was just part of the daily background track of our lives. In the market where we used to shop, the occasional hand grenade would go off. So there were notices outside, you know, little notices with guns and, and hand grenades on, with a big red cross over saying, please do not bring your hand grenades to the market, <laughs> right? But seemingly people ignored that, and so we had the, the occasional accident and the occasional deliberate smash and grab using a hand grenade. So we were surrounded by poverty, hunger, and a whole nation that was really traumatised by the experiences that they'd had. And we were made aware of the shortness and fragility of life. So, quite a difficult environment to work in. On the wall of our room, we had a Bible verse, which I realised was actually used in last month's Songs of Praise. So maybe this is God saying, learn this verse. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. That's from Proverbs 3. And through that verse, we were able to just put everything into context. We wouldn't understand the how and the why of many things, but we could trust and obey, and he would make our path straight, and the objectives, the service that we were carrying out for his kingdom, uh, would be brought to fruition. And for us, it was the beginning of 30 years of involvement with God's ministry in Cambodia, so it was a big moment in my life, for sure. And I've been privil privileged to see God do some amazing things uh, in people's lives in that country. So again, God spoke all about his faithfulness to us through his scriptures. So just in case you think all these examples are from the distant past or from exotic, tricky places, what about the scariest thing today? The scariest thing today is this. This. Standing here in front of you lot. What should I say? Will I stumble over my words? Will it all be a load of nonsense? What does God want me to say? Maybe for some people, like the people that are around me, public speaking is very easy. But it's not particularly easy for me, and I don't particularly like talking about myself. So what was I going to say? Well, Carolyn spoke this morning, and she said in our service then that it was our duty to witness as Christians. And because it's Pentecost, you also said that the Holy Spirit will provide what we need should we choose to witness to uh, about his love for us. And our, we've also, as I've said, been talking about Elijah. And you'll remember that Elijah had to stand up in front of hundreds of prophets of Baal, so quite similar to you lot, who are just about as scary, <laughs> and witness to what God was saying to him and to the king Ahab. So yes, through the voices of other Christians, God has spoken to me of his empowerment to do tricky things, like witness to other people. So he said, don't fear to stand up and say what God wants you to, and to talk about the things that he's done in my life and others' lives on other occasions too. So just to say, really, that God speaks to us in many ways. Karen, again, has been talking about how the Holy Spirit talks to us. And sometimes, I guess it is directly, still small voices that you can hear. But often it's through the works of his hands, what we see around us. Often it's through his scriptures. And very often it's through the voices of his people and the things they say. They don't always know what they're saying to you, but sometimes when people speak to you, you can just hear the voice of God speaking. But I have to say his voice can be very quiet and easily missed. The key thing for me was to be attentive to all the different ways that he speaks to us. Be listening, looking and reading. And then he will know that you want to hear what he has to say. And he will speak as he has to me. Thank you.
Well, you'd never know that you found public speaking difficult, would you? <laughs> By the way, it's always a bit scary, <laughs> isn't it, Philip? <laughs> so let's sing this lovely hymn, then, this Pentecost hymn that's uh, really a prayer, actually, asking that God would work in our hearts by his Holy Spirit and keep that passion for Jesus burning. Apparently, there was um, some real controversy when Charles Wesley wrote this hymn. Uh, because it, it's got a word in it with six syllables. And apparently at that time, it wasn't considerable, considered fashionable or helpful to have a hymn uh, to, in hymn writing to have, have words with so many syllables. So um, a lot of people avoided this hymn. <laughs> but see if you can spot the word. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what it is. You can see if you can spot it. So let's stand if we're able and sing this great prayer. So what was the word? Indistinguishable. It's brilliant, isn't it? Why wouldn't you sing that hymn? What a wonderful prayer it is. So Denise uh, Hogg is going to come now and um, introduce another favourite hymn. And she's going to tell us why she's chosen it. And after that, Kath Pickskill is going to come and lead us in prayer. Thank you, Denise. Hello. It's always difficult when somebody asks you to choose your favourite song, because I don't think many of us have one favourite song, but this song has been brought up to me a few times in the last week, and this is why I chose it. It's Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. Now, there'll be somebody here chuckling. They weren't allowed to have it at their wedding. <laughs> I don't know why, because my brother got married on April the 1st, <laughs> and he was very happy. But when I was 
14, I sang my first solo in the school assembly and I sang verse 3 of this song. O Sabbath rest by Galilee, O calm of hills above, where Jesus knelt to share with thee the silence of eternity interpreted by love. I'm in my almost late 70s now, and I've just been away for a few days, didn't go far, and I have to say that I have never before exp experienced the calmness of this verse. Went to a little cottage with a little cottage garden. We did hear the birds twittering. We did hear the bumblebees. No cars, no talking. It was perfect. And each day we went into Southwold. We didn't shop apart from food. All we did was walk the promenade, stand and watch the tide come in, sit on a bench and just listen to the sea. I took my knitting, I took my book, I took my iPad and they were still in exactly the same place I put them to go when I came home. But I have never truly experienced a piece where you don't want to talk, you are just completely lost in the beauty that you're hearing, that you're looking at, and you think, and this God made me. That must have been on April the 1st. <laughs> oh, Sabbath rest. And the other, the other verse, which I, I only sang a solo once, I must tell you that, I'm not a soloist. The second verse is in simple trust. And I just wonder how many of us have forgotten simple trust. We study, we share, we pull sermons apart, we pull Bible readings apart, we look for deeper and deeper things in it. And sometimes we just have to stop, listen to what's being said. And it's in the quietness, as Jeff said, most of us were converted in the quietness. I couldn't tell you the date I was converted. I know it was a May, but I couldn't tell you the date. And I was 11 years old. I'm nearly 78 now. And it's taken all this time for me to learn to stop, to look, and to listen. I think people laugh at the first verse. Dear Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish ways. Well, he's every right to, hasn't he, really? I mean, we must be the biggest idiots he ever made. We, we, we complicate everything. And yet, when you love the Lord, um, there is no need for that. But we do daily need to ask the Holy Spirit to reclothe us in our rightful minds. Jesus first. If you don't know the Lord Jesus, I'm sorry, I don't know how to explain to you what you're missing. Now, like most of us here, I've had my three score years and ten. I'm nearer 80 than I was 70. But I know the Lord and I have no fears for my future. So all I can say to you this afternoon is, if, if you haven't made that decision to ask the Lord into your heart, to make you one of his children, do it today because we've all gone past our sell-by dates. <laughs> it's true, it's true, isn't it? We're only promised 70 years, so any of us over 70, we're on bonus time. <laughs> so, no, it's, it's true. We, we laugh at it. And sometimes we laugh because we're frightened. Well, I'm not frightened of the future. 
and I hope you don't have any reason to be. For those of you who are very astute, I'm not Kath Pickersgill. <laughs> Kath will be bringing the reading later on. Um, for those of you who don't know you, my name is Carol Collett, and I am the wife that was acquired by Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, as we come to our Heavenly Father in prayer, we know that not only will he hear the words that I say, he will also hear your own silent pray, prayers. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you, recognizing you are the almighty God, creator of this beautiful world and all living things. We confess that mankind has brought much harm to the natural world and has created much trouble and strife 
amongst its peoples. We ask for your forgiveness. We thank you, Lord, for all your good gifts to us, providing for our daily needs and for protection and security. Most of all, Lord, we thank you for the greatest gift of all, your love in sending Jesus to live amongst us, modelling and teaching about life with you and ultimately dying for our sins so that we can know your forgiveness and have the hope of eternal life with you. We pray for those near and far who face difficulties, shortages of food, loss of homes, shelter or security. Those who are in the midst of conflicts, big or small, near or far. Those dealing with poor health or loneliness. We also pray for those grieving following the loss of a loved one or close friend. Each one of us has needs and knows of people facing challenges or situations that are difficult. So in the silence, we bring these things before you in the knowledge that you will hear our prayers. Thank you, Lord that you hear and answer the prayers of our heart. May we and those we brought before you know your comfort, peace and provision. We pray for all those in authority, both in our country and around the world, and ask that you give them wisdom in decision-making. We pray for justice and mercy to prevail. We pray that those who know you will be guided by you, and we pray for more godly leaders. Heavenly Father, we pray that we will make good use of opportunities we have to grow in our knowledge and understanding of you, and in so doing, to gain God godly wisdom. We're sorry for the times we act in our own strength, often with poor outcomes. Help us to understand that your word is dependable. In the good and bad times, help us to keep our eyes firmly fixed on you, always seeking to do your will. We read in, in Ecclesiastes 12 that we are to fear God and keep his commandments. We pray that with your help, this may be a reality for each one of us. So we ask that you help us, Lord, to always put our trust in you and keep our eyes fixed on the hope of eternity with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shall we now say together the prayer Jesus taught us to pray? Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Carol. Well, we're coming to the end of our um, series in the book of Ecclesiastes today, and we've been looking at uh, some of life's big questions. Where do we find meaning and purpose satisfaction and hope what about all this life has to offer what about wisdom and riches and relationships where do they all fit in and today as has been said we're looking at what the book of ecclesiastes has to say about older age from chapter 12 
But before that, we're going to sing another hymn. And uh, it's a hymn which talks about knowing God through all the seasons of life. And it's also a prayer uh, for ourselves and our world as well. So we're going to sing uh, Lord for the Years. Let's stand if we're able. Right, I am reading from Ecclesiastes and chapter 12. Remember your creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come and the years approach, when you will say, I have no pleasure in them. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars grow dark, and the clouds return after rain, when the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men stoop, 
when the grinders cease because they are few and those looking through the windows grow dim. When the doors to the street are closed and the sound of grinding fades. When men rise up at the sound of birds, but all their songs grow faint. When men are afraid of heights and of dangers in the streets. When the almond tree blossoms and the grasshopper drags himself along and desire is no longer stirred. Then man goes to his eternal home and mourners go about in the streets. Remember him before the silver cord is severed or the golden bowl is broken, before the pitcher is shattered at the spring or the wheel broken at the well and the dust returns to the ground it came from and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Everything is meaningless. Not only was the teacher wise, but also he imparted knowledge to the people. He pondered and searched out and set in order many proverbs. The teacher searched to find just the right words and what he wrote was upright and true. The words of the wise are like goads. They're collected sayings like firmly embedded nails given by one shepherd. Be warned, my son, of anything in addition to them. Of making many books, there is no end, and much study wearies the body. Now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. Well, thank you, Kath. Now, you may wonder why we chose Ecclesiastes. What a... What a funny book to read, isn't it? How depressing was that? Not, not Kath's reading, the content. When you read it through again, you can actually smile. I don't know. Anyone got any grinders which are ceasing or few? Maybe some of these grinders haven't got as many as we used to have. It's quite amusing in one sense, but very salutary in other senses. But we did choose the book of Ecclesiastes, and it is quite an unusual book to speak about. And the writer does seem pretty pessimistic, doesn't he? Everything is meaningless. I mean, what about that? Everything is rather gloomy and depressing. Surely we should be thinking about something cheerful, something uplifting, something hopeful. However, if you've read the book and you look at it again, you may notice that every so often you get little pockets of positivity, like little nuggets of gold in a dull grey rock, which bring a contrast to what is pessimistic. As I say, you may have smiled at some of those if you listened to the descriptions of old age as Kath read it to us. You may have nodded as well as you recognise some of the things which are actually true in your life. Not only the grinders ceasing, but looking through the windows growing dim. Hmm, maybe. And uh, yes, all their songs founding rather faint. What about these hearing aids we have to wear? It's, it is quite amusing, but also very true. But you may have noticed, as I say, Amongst the positives, there are negatives and positives, as the writer shares his experience of his long life. I don't know why they chose me to speak about old age. can't understand it at all. Oh, did I? Okay. Well, I must have forgotten to do it, but there we go. <laughs> and yes, Jeff, it is quite scary standing up. And they are lovely people, by the way. I'm not really scared of you at all. Not very much. 
But what are some of the positives? What are the advantages? Come on, what are the advantages of getting old? Now, what I'm going to say now is not from the passage. I'm just telling you this. So this is not scripture. This is my thoughts on the matter. We don't have to go to work anymore. Hooray! <laughs> Even if you enjoy going... I used to enjoy work, believe it or not. I was a teacher for many years and a minister, and I enjoyed them both. So work isn't always nasty and boring and horrible. But we don't have to go to work, we can't, do we? And we can get up when we like. We can even have a lie-in if we want to in the morning. We can go to bed when we like, because we don't have to get up early in the morning. And we can have a snooze during the day. And I don't just mean those people who live in Spain and have a siesta after lunch. We can do it any time of the day. We don't have to dress up in a suit and a tie, or even wear a jacket. We can wear what we like. If they're being a cold day, I'd wear my cardigan. Cardigans are comfortable, aren't they? We don't have to wear all these things we used to dress up in. But seriously, we have time. Time for ourselves, time for others, if we choose to. And that's a really serious advantage of getting old. Dare we say it, we also have experience we can pass on to those who are younger. I don't know when Jeff was speaking. Jeff sounded as if he was old. I don't think Jeff's old, is he? I don't know how old he is. He's not really old, not like his dad's there sitting next to him. He's a bit older than Jeff. Uh, but these youngsters, they do have their uses, don't they? Especially when our mobile phones don't work or the technology doesn't work. We have to ask the youngsters. I don't just mean the children, I mean the grandchildren as well. And so we could go on, couldn't we? But we better stick to the passage, otherwise I shall get told off. Now, let's look at those glimpses here and there which portray the wisdom acquired by the author over a very long life. Verse 9, it says, Not only was the teacher wise, he also imparted knowledge to the people. He pondered and searched out and set in order many proverbs. I wonder where the teacher got his wisdom from. Well, Jeff talked a bit about wisdom, didn't he? In Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. True wisdom comes from God, it comes from a right understanding of God, who he is, what he's done, a rightful respect for God, a right understanding of who God is and how he's made us in his image. Now, yes, that can come early in life, and for some people it does. But it can also come later in life as well, as we ponder, as we search out truth, as we reflect on our experiences of life and all that we've been through. Whenever it comes, knowledge of God brings true wisdom. If we've acquired this wisdom and truth, we can seek to share it with others, imparting this knowledge in a gentle and respectful way as opportunities arrive arise. Verse 10 goes on to say, the teacher searched to find just the right words, and what he wrote was upright and true. Hopefully, as we get older, it becomes easier to find the right words to say, and the right way, and the right time to say them in different situations and circumstances, so they are well received. May that be true of each one of us. And we also trust that the words we speak as we get older are words of truth, real truth, God's truth, the truth revealed by God himself as found in the Bible. Sadly, we live in a world where real truth is sometimes at a premium. It depends very much on who's saying it or who claims to be saying the truth. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You want to know real truth? Don't listen to people you might hear in the media. Listen to God. Read about God. Listen to Jesus. He is real truth. Now, not all truth is comfortable. Verse 11 says, The words of the wise are like goads. Hmm. Their collected sayings are like firmly embedded nails. Doesn't sound very comfortable, does it? Goads? Nails? 
You know, a goad is something you use to prod someone, or perhaps better still, an animal. Not nastily, of course, but you just give them a bit of a poke, don't you? Designed to make an impression, to produce a response, albeit maybe rather painful. Do you know, I reckon God's truth sometimes can feel painful as it challenges something in our lives. And maybe lots of painful truths altogether would feel like firmly embedded nails hitting home where it hurts because maybe there's some deeply rooted wrong in our lives. God wants us to live good lives, lives of honesty and integrity. And at times we may be challenged and even convicted about what's not right in our lives. We may feel that certain things do need to be put right, even later in life. It doesn't just happen as we're younger. In the book of Hebrews in the New Testament, it says, The Lord disciplines the one he loves. And God disciplines us for our good, in order that we may share in his holiness. You know, discipline isn't a negative thing. Discipline is designed to make things better. Surely this is good. We should be glad about and willing to experience God's discipline in our lives because God wants what's best for us, whether we're young or whether we're old. Now the last two verses in Ecclesiastes say this. Now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. This is the duty of all mankind. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. Hmm. Serious words, aren't they, as we come to the end of Ecclesiastes. Another exhortation to fear God, to show him a rightful respect, to acknowledge our dependence on him, and to remember, yes, one day we shall have to stand before him to give an account of our lives to the one who's all-seeing and all-knowing, and yet the one who loves us and the one who's for us. He's not against us. He's not there to trip us up. He wants us to live good lives and to put our faith and trust in him. So when that day comes of facing him, we can do it with a clear conscience because we've known his forgiveness and his presence with us. Well, as we've reminded ourselves, today is Pentecost Sunday. That's the day we celebrate the giving of the Holy Spirit to those first disciples. This just reminds us we don't have to do it all on our own. When Jesus left, as he left, he promised he would send someone else to, like him to be with us, to be our helper. That person is the Holy Spirit. He's the one who brings about a new and eternal life as we put our trust in Jesus as our Saviour and Lord. He's the one who grows his fruit, his good fruit, in us to make us more like Jesus. He's the one who gifts us and equips us to do those good works that God has prepared for us in advance. And he's the one who can give us the assurance that when we leave this life, which we surely will one day, we can live with him forever. On that day when the Spirit came to the disciples, it was fulfillment of a prophecy from the prophet Joel. It includes these words. I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Well, that's pretty comprehensive, isn't it? Young men, old men, sons, daughters, men, women. I reckon that includes all of us. You see, whatever our age, whether we're old or think we're getting that way, or whether we think, oh, I'm still pretty young, whatever our age, we can be those who are trusting in God for our salvation, trusting in what Jesus did for us on the cross, trusting that we can live with him forever, and in the meantime, we can serve him day by day, yes, enabled by that same Holy Spirit who gives us all that we need. So my prayer is that that will be our experience, whether we are young or old or somewhere in between. We will know God and know his enabling and know that we can trust him. And yes, there are challenging things in life and there are things we have to face up to. But with God in us, 
we have nothing to fear because he loves us, he cares for us and one day we can stand before him and he will welcome us into his presence but we do have to put our faith and trust in Jesus so let's pray God our Heavenly Father on this Pentecost Sunday we thank you that for the time we've been able to spend together may what we've experienced and heard today remain with us whatever our age and may we be enabled to live faithfully for you day by day for as long as you give us life. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Now our last hymn is a familiar one, which reminds us that God is the one we can cling on to and the one who's done so much to save us. It's Rock of Ages, shed for, shed for me. Thank you. I'm just going to find it in my hymn book. Here we are, rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. If you're able to stand, let's stand and sing this hymn together. Just a few um, notices as we close before we have our tea. So thank you so much to everyone who's taken part. Uh, thank you for sharing. Thank you for praying. Thank you for singing. Thank you for twiddling the knobs. Uh, so uh, such a big um, team. But thank you too to our lovely kitchen team who have prepared a lovely afternoon tea for us. So you're very welcome to stay. You don't need to have signed up or anything. Um, just make way, your way to the small hall and sit wherever you like. And somebody will bring you a cup of tea and do tuck in. Um, so next Songs of Praise is on the 16th of June, which is also Father's Day. Um, we've got a couple of standalone um, Songs of Praise services now. So we've got some other speakers. Uh, it's nice to have Philip. Thank you very much, Philip. And uh, we've got some other people just doing a one-off for us. And um, so that'll be a real treat as well. So I do encourage you to come along to those. Let me just pray and say thank you to uh, God for our food. Father, we thank you for time together. Thank you for how precious it is to be part of your family. And Lord, thank you for those who have prepared this lovely meal for us. May we be blessed and may we be a blessing to others around these tables. And uh, Lord, thank you for every provision that you give us. And most of all, we thank you for your provision in Jesus and the life and hope that he gives us. We praise you and thank you on this Pentecost Sunday too for your Holy Spirit. And uh, Lord, we give you all our praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.
So do make your way out, enjoy, and uh, yeah, have fun around the tables. Thank you.